about the report. You know what? I'm not going to continue. Thank you. I just can't. Can't think. Can't do it. We should just wait until this is over. Steve. No, because it may be a welcome. Well, I'd like to ask my questions when I don't have to compete with uh, the Toronto Fire Services. Thank you. Well, now you know how I feel when everybody's screaming. Sorry, Cat. Speaker. Okay. No, I wasn't talking to you, Council Fletcher. So what is it you would like to do? You have 30 seconds left in your time. I'll take it up later okay. when I don't have this. I actually have from 403 because once I got stopped, then this started very clearly and I'd like a minute for questions at another time. Thank you. I did put your time on hold, but I will give you a minute. Councillor Davis, would you like to ask questions? <laughs> Would you like to ask questions? I'm just more of a So, Councillor Davis, Councillor Fletcher, it is hard to, in the midst of a fire alarm, to carry on. Um, but I will try. All right, I'll turn it on. Um, to the Ombudsman, the recommendation in your report is quite specific that <clears throat> that we should adopt the recommendation that we ask the province of Ontario to create a Toronto Public Service Act. Um, and yet in the report, for me, there is very little to substantiate that position. Um, and I have some difficulties under understanding of what are the benefits, contents, the substantive rationale um, for going in that direction. And I'm wondering why it would not be more, would it not be more appropriate for us to have a fuller report before we say we automatically ask the province to do this? Uh, through you, Madam Speaker, uh, I think I heard from the previous councillor's suggestion that I come back with some ideas. I'm happy to do that. Uh, this, I'm, I'm pleased that you're having the kind of discussion you are about this. Uh, I, I, the, the opportunity in my annual report message is the only place uh, where I can provide you with my observations as opposed to evidentiary ones coming out of formal investigations. You okay. will be hearing more on the topic of speaking truth to power in forthcoming investigations. I understand I understand the, the fundamental assumptions about separation of church and state, for lack of a better word, way to describe it, uh, and the need for a separate independent professional civil service. Um, and how we uh, ensure the accountability um, around the political interventions that occur. But I guess I would, having worked for a minister um, in which it was in the Ontario Public Service environment, in a political position, um, there was some great difficulty in being able to get access to the kind of information and support from the bureaucracy because it was bound up so tightly about how and who could be uh, spoken with within that bureaucracy. And I, I'm wondering, don't, do you believe we ought to have some balance, uh, particularly at the municipal level, where we're much more service delivery oriented and where we uh, are organized um, by wards and by geographic areas and are much more accountable for the services on the ground. Through you, Madam Speaker, thank you for the question, Councillor, because uh, I did say earlier that the municipal governance is unique. Um, that, as Councillor Vaughan pointed out, Ontario is about policy. I mean, an ADM doesn't speak to the minister without the deputy minister present and so on and so forth. Uh, it is absolutely about what is, needs to be contained in that legislation, and that's something over which you have control. The intent is absolutely not to stop you having access within your own ward or citywide at a policy level. 
to the best advice from your public service, to the best uh, work from your public servants. The intent, rather, is to make the rules clearer. So who did you expect would be, just the recommendation says we have the problem to do it for us, to develop this um, act. Oh, thank you. What a relief. It's very difficult. Okay, Councillor Fletcher, it stopped. What's your point of personal privilege? That when there is a fire alarm, we should simply stop and take a break until we're either ordered out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, thank you. You know, I will wait. Okay, Councillor Fletcher. Um, I would ask, Speaker, that in these types of circumstances, that you would consult with the clerk, whose job really it is to ensure and assist you that Council has the, uh, the proper running, the smooth running of, the, um, of our meeting, that we're able to make good decisions, and that would be my request of you. And if the clerk says continue to meet through a fire alarm, then that's fine. But if the clerk says we should stop and wait for that, then we should stop and wait. I think it's very difficult for anyone to pay attention, to keep their thoughts. This is quite an important matter. We're talking about a public service act here. And I find that my ability to concentrate, my ability to make good decisions is not uh, available to me during the fire drill or the fire alarm in council. And that would be my request in the future that you consult with the clerk and make that decision together. Thank, as thank you, Councillor Fletcher. And I, did, and I did consult with the clerk for your information. And, and so, Councillor Davis, take, Councillor Fletcher, please, if you want to make a motion, but Councillor Davis, would you like to continue? I just... Councillor Davis, I'll give you about, I stopped your time at uh, 30 minutes. I just wanted to confirm that. Councillor Davis. Councillor Davis. Um, thank you, Councillor. Deputy Mayor Holliday. Um, so, just to confirm what I think I heard over the last four and a half minutes. Um, you would have no objection to us referring this off to uh, staff to report back on uh, a more substantive report on, on this matter of um, having a Toronto Public Service Act. Through you, Madam Speaker, of course not. This is okay. an enormously complicated recommendation. Thank you. <laughs> Any last question? Yes, yeah, okay, because I did ask some time on too. Uh, yes, Councillor Fletcher, don't get excited. Hold on, hold on, I'll get to you. You'll get your minute. Thank you. One minute. Thank you. Um, just to you, uh, Madam Ombudsman, that the reports that you write and then when we make recommendations uh, out of those, like let's say the last recommendation with the third party claims, Insurers. Do you follow up in any way to see that that's been implemented or is that simply left to staff? Do you make any recommendations or does the city manager come to you and ask any questions? Through you, Madam Speaker, I automatically monitor the implementation of all recommendations. So the recommendation that we should get a one window, um, which I see is in the report, would you have any uh, suggestions that we should actually be advised directly as to who the staff person is we would be dealing with as our one window? Or is that something that would be of concern to you? 
what would the protocol be for those types of recommendations? Has it been established with the city manager? Uh, through you, Madam Speaker, with respect to my responsibilities, if I saw that something was not being implemented, I always have the option to bring it back to council. I'm just asking about the protocol. Through, you have established any of those with the city manager regarding how that would come back to council and what form or council or? That was your last question. Uh, through you, Madam Speaker, no, but then it's not my responsibility to do that. And he's not at. Councillor Crescenti. Uh oh. Point of order, Councillor Grimes. Form call with with Form call. Form call. <laughs> Members of the voting panel, now open. Would you please press either the yes or no button to indicate your presence in the chamber? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 